1.2 and hopefully you watched as you were supposed to uh, the ed puzzle on how to speed up a chemical reaction and get a date to the dance if you haven't watched that video you need to watch that first okay because that is a very good illustration of collision theory and what is collision theory it says in order for a reaction to take place particles must collide They must collide with enough energy in the correct orientation okay that's what collision theory says and that ted that ted talks or the ted ed video rather uh illustrates that really well with the with the cartoon and for, uh, in order to speed up a reaction, uh, particles must, uh, let's see, increase in concentration, increase the pressure, and increase the surface area. Okay, and uh, with each one of those, uh, with each one of those things, well, each one of those things, I guess, uh, applies to a different state of matter. So, in order for a reaction to take place, particles must collide. In order for a reaction to speed up, solutions you can increase the concentration of the reactants increase concentration okay in gases you can increase the pressure this applies to gases only. Okay. And in solids, you can increase the surface area. Okay, in order to speed up a reaction, with regards to the energy, you can increase the temperature. How do you speed up the reaction? You can increase the temperature. Okay, so with enough energy, how do you add energy into the system? You increase the temperature. Okay, how do you speed up colliding particles? You can increase the concentration of reactants in, in solutions. You can increase the pressure in gases. And in solids, you can increase the surface area. And what about correct orientation? We can add a catalyst. A catalyst. Remember they said in the video, a catalyst is like a matchmaker, right? A catalyst will change the orientation of the particles around, so that it doesn't require as much energy, okay? It doesn't require as much energy to get the reaction going. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna look at two different graphs. Uh, of the two, the kinetic energy graph is the more difficult one, in my opinion, than the potential energy graph. <coughs> While we're doing this, you need to think about what it is that we're actually talking about. Kinetic energy relates to temperature. To temperature. And motion. Okay, that's kinetic energy. It relates to temperature and motion. Okay, so the graph to the right shows the distribution of kinetic energy particles in a sample. So again, we're talking about the temperature and the amount of motion of these particles. Write the, X, uh, write the labels for the axes. The x-axis is kinetic energy. And the y-axis, we have the number of particles. Okay, so this is the kinetic energy of the particles. Really what the kinetic energy of the particles is, is the, uh, is the temperature. Temperature, because what is kinetic energy of a sample? I'm sorry, what is the temperature of a sample? It's the average kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy 
of all of the uh, movement in that sample, of all the particles moving in that sample. Okay. Uh, temperature. Okay. The temperature is related to the average kinetic energy, and I'm not going to get into how do the axes relate to each other. Uh, yeah, well. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to it later. The temperature is related to the average kinetic energy. of the particles in that sample. Label T1 on the axis that represents the temperature for this sample. Okay, so where do we find the average kinetic energy of all? So these are all particles moving around under here. Okay, that's what this represents. The total number of particles, okay, and in a sample. And so what would the average kinetic, average temperature be in this sample? Well, the average temperature, okay, is going to be right here. That's going to be the temperature of this sample. It's going to be right there. Okay. Oh, actually, we can just since it's since that's dots, we can just do this as a line. Okay. And we call that T1 for the sample. Let's say this is a sample of water at I don't know 70 degrees. Well, this would represent that temperature that the water's at. Now, some of these particles here are going to be moving faster. Some of them are going to be moving slower than than uh, than than others. But the average kinetic energy of that sample is going to be measured with a temperature T1. Okay. The threshold energy is the minimum energy with which particles must collide in order for a reaction to take place. Shade in the part of the graph that represents the particles that have enough energy for the reaction. Okay, so this is the threshold energy. Let's say this was, I guess water was a bad example, but let's say this was some kind of a reaction mixture, okay? And the reaction mixture is, uh, it still has that temperature of 70 degrees. Well, in order for the reaction to move forward, there's a certain number of, it has to go past the, a certain number of particles have to go past that threshold energy. And that's this right here. These are the particles that have enough energy to start the chemical reaction. Okay, I'll say that again. These are the particles that have enough energy to start the chemical reaction. Okay. Particles with enough energy to start the reaction. Notice you don't need all of the particles to start the reaction. You might only need this amount, or you might need, I don't know how many, but you don't necessarily need all of the particles in a reaction mixture to start a reaction. You could start with a small amount and then build from there. Okay, But they have to cross that threshold energy first. When the temperature increases, particles move faster and have more kinetic energy. Sketch the new curve uh, at a higher temperature on the first graph and label it T2 on the axis. That re represents a higher. You know what? I'm not going to do this right now. Okay, we're not going to do this right now because that's just going to confuse things. Okay, that concept's going to confuse things. So I'm going to move on to the next one. At a higher temperature, more particles move with at least the threshold energy, so the reaction will go faster than the lower temperature. And this should say use the first curve, first curve for question six. Okay. And here's question six. When a catalyst is added, the threshold energy is lowered, so uh, more or fewer particles move with at least the threshold energy, more particles move with at least the threshold energy and it is easier for a reaction to take place. The reaction will go faster than without a catalyst. Okay, so we know that a catalyst lowers the activation energy. It also lowers the amount of energy required to start the, re uh, to, get the to get the reaction started. So what does that look like in terms of the threshold energy? It looks like this. You move the threshold energy back over here. Okay, that's what a catalyst will do. Okay, it'll actually move it back here. So you don't need as many particles moving as fast to get that reaction going. Up here, you need only the fastest moving particles 
out of this in, out of all of the particles in the sample would be enough to start the uh, start the reaction. But with with uh, when you add a catalyst, you can use a lot more okay a lot more of these particles as represented here. Look at all of these particles under here. And let's compare it to the first one. Okay, the first one, there's only this amount of particles that would have enough energy to start the reaction. When you add a catalyst, you move this threshold energy back, and now you've got all of these particles here. Okay, they can start the reaction. And so we label this threshold energy with a catalyst. And those are the two main concepts uh, for kinetic energy graphs. Oops, for kinetic energy graphs. Okay. Next, we're going to look at uh, we'll look at potential energy graphs next. Okay. Oh, and I just noticed here. Let me go and do that. Okay. So one more time, when a catalyst is added, the threshold energy is lowered, so more particles move with at least the threshold energy, and it is easier. Okay, the reaction will go faster. I know that I'm leaving this out. Um, I'm leaving this out, and I'm also going to leave out that second graphing, that second one, just because I think it'll confuse you if we if we discuss it. Okay, that's it.